It's been a couple of long format videos that I have done recently. And one of my friends texted me to ask me to talk about like broad organization tips. I don't know if I am 100% legitimate to talk about those, but it got me thinking. And there is something that I am really passionate about when it comes to organization, and it is tooling. Like creating your own tools, making your life easier, and just set up your environment to be able to be your own better producer in whatever you are working on. So today, let's just talk about that tools in general that you create for yourself. So first of all, in the tech industry, what do we talk about when we talk about tools, more specifically in software engineering? So like tools can be a bunch of anything. My way to describe it is just pieces of stored information to make your life easier or faster when it comes to use them. For example, entire libraries can be considered tools. I a library that I use on a daily called 3.js. This is a great example. Entire frameworks as well. This is open frameworks, an open source C++, you know, it's in the name framework to do visual stuff. Or even entire apps can be considered tools. For example, right there, Blender. So why talking about that? Why are tools a nice thing? First of all, time gain. When you are entering this industry, you will see in the beginning that you will have some pretty bad headaches according to what you are working on. And those headaches are the same that someone else had when they just started. A way to see it is that all the headaches you have now, try to package them in a solution so that you don't have them later. A very simple example, you are trying to mix two different libraries together, whatever they are, and for some reason the data doesn't flow correctly between the two. You are going to spend a couple of hours, slash days or weeks, on that particular problem, and once you find a solution, well, that problem is not going to come up again if you are again in this situation. You are just going to go back to that code, grab some little pieces of information, and just use it again. This is not a tool in itself, but you could make that particular solution a tool for you later down the line. Tooling is just a way to add to your expertise. It's just like being a private chef. When you get started with absolutely no tools in your arsenal, you are trying to grab like a couple of pens right there that you find here or like whatever, you're just crafting your own sets. Tooling is just that, it's just acquiring your own sets of helpers, sort of, to be able to show up to the next job with your own sets of equipments and your just overall knowledge. So TLDR, it just allows you to be faster. And for example, if you are a freelancer and you get paid by the hour, this is how the rate fluctuates. Obviously, tooling is not the only variable when it comes to pricing, but that is a big one, in my opinion. The more tools you have to answer to different problems, the faster you will be, and overall, your cost per hour is just gonna go up. So when it comes to tooling, what is my philosophy? Again, I'm still sort of new in this industry, I'm just sharing with you my thought process, and maybe in a couple of years I will look back to this video and be like, nah, that wasn't the way, but still. Try to find a way of coding and stick to it. For example, me going on different projects, and again, it's very specific one to the other, but I try to go with a singleton approach when I write my classes. It allows me to isolate functionality, meaning that if I am not making a tool of a class at that point, I can just go back to that particular code thingy when I need it in another project. It's just that I would like to make my code easy to grab and go when I'm working on something else. And I don't really have that many tools scattered around many repos, but I love my good old starters. Starters, starters, starters. I like to shove everything I pretentially need on a project in one single place so that, again, it is easy to just grab and go. So, with that said, here are some tools I have built in the past. If you don't know, around two years ago, I gave a 3GS online course that is on Awards Academy right now, and uh, I gave away my Vue.js starter. This is one of the many examples of starters you can find online for a particular technology. Me, I created this one because I just like Vue, there is already a webpack installed in it, and you don't really have to mess around with any configuration. Is it the most optimized and straightforward way to work with WebGL? Absolutely not. But if you know the technology, you like it, and it's an environment in which you are comfortable, why would you like to look further when it comes to just like create something custom for yourself and have fun with it? So yeah, this was one of the many examples, and it was my first taste into just like tooling in general. Being able to configure what you might need for GLSL with GLSL5, for example, creating your first boilerplate code so that you don't even have to set up a camera or anything, you just have to like clone the repo, install the packages, 
and boom, there you go. You can just like have fun right away. Oh yeah, and it's also taught me in the beginning that like over time you can add to a starter. And to be very, very clear, I didn't create this starter only for the Awards Academy course. This was an older project and I was using it on the day to day for whatever personal projects I had. And this taught me that over time, you can always add more to a particular starter. For example, in the beginning, when I just got started with this, I saw that I still was having patterns in what I was looking for and I was starting with a project. For example, like I was getting more and more into custom GLSL shaders and every time I would start a new code, I would just like look around and, oh yeah, how do I import a texture? For example, I forgot about that. And it was that every single time. And it allows me to recognize that when you have starters, your goal is to minimize the things you repeatedly do when you start a new project. This was the philosophy behind it. For example, for the uh, texture loading example I was just talking about, I just added in the code somewhere in the GLSL that, yeah, this is just how you import a texture. If you don't use it for a project, that's okay. It's just going to be some more code that you just don't use. Or if you need it, it's just going to be right there. One click away directly in your file tree. So that was one with Vue uh, that I used until, yeah, 2022, something like that. And I recently switched to Next. It's something I use on the day-to-day -day at work. And I've been getting more and more into uh, just like React in general with TypeScript. So it just made sense to create something like that. So again, still singleton approach and trying to add to it on the day to day. Yeah, but recently, uh, we will talk about that later. I do have my own RAF request animation frame little uh, utiles function, and I just added a delta time accessible everywhere. I will not go into details, but this just goes to show that like, I'm trying to add as much as possible to my starters over time. And again, these starters are public. If you find my way of coding attractive or like this is the way you also could and would like to get started with 3JS or whatever, feel free to use them. Everything that you see right now is open source and you can just go and grab it. But my goal is not to make it uh, available to the population. It's just for me to go grab it. If you find this way of coding attractive and would like to acquire that same coding taste, please feel free. So yeah, these were my two main starters. Uh, I have also done, for example, like, yeah, th oh, this is an example for something that is like way smaller, a simple three camera parallax. We talked about that in my previous episode or like the one before, I can't remember. I think it was the one before, but like one of the most basic 3JS effect that you have online. I'm just going to pull up an example. Yeah. For example, like this, right? The ball is just in the middle. And like when you move the mouse around that camera effect, when the camera moves and still is stuck to an object, this is a very classic thing that you see online, right? And I, when I work for clients, I can't remember last time I didn't use this. So yeah, instead of like going to all the project, copy it, remove what I might have done for this particular project that made it like its own little thing, I just can like come to this repo, copy it, paste it wherever in my new code base and boom, that's it. So yeah, tooling can be as basic as even like a simple function. And that's really it. So yeah, the camera parallax is one. Uh, I also have my own little shitty, by the way, a particle generator. So yeah, that, for example, like a simple RAF utiles function. Well, there it's a class, but you get the point. So yeah, for example, this, a RAF utiles class, uh, there are for sure 25,000 different ways to do that already online. I'm sure also there are some NPM packages that is like way, way more optimized than the one I have right there. But it's also just like the joy of creating something that you yourself are going to use in the future. When like you're working on a personal project and you know you need something that you already have in your arsenal, go there, copy it, you know how it works on the inside and being able to just like upgrade it from time to time. Like that's the thing I, I really love is just like little upgrades here and there. That's what I love about tooling. And also gives you more knowledge. I could have a uh, have a like a package go to when it comes to rafts, but I built this. Uh, I imagined it, I know how it works, like subscribing a function, how to unsubscribe it based off of string. Uh, maybe in the future I could do like an automatic ID generator, that, that kind of shit. But like this gives you progress, big progress in my opinion. So 
we talked about tooling, uh, what it was, why it was nice, my philosophy when it comes to it, a couple of tools I have built for myself. Um, what about a little example? If you saw my last video, I created this little nifty little thing right there. So yeah, this little thing, I am not going to go into the details of why I built it or how I did it. If you'd like to know that, please go watch my last video. It's nice, by the way. Um, like, to make a long story short, I just wanted to know a little bit more about how I could use GLSL functions to make something more watery slash organic. So yeah, I wanted to do that, right? Did I want to create something that was easy to push to a repo while uh, looking into the rafts and how I could use my frames and uh, uh, importing threes for this and uh, I know I have the TypeScript for that and this and that, whatever. No, I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to get started or something to play around with GLSL shaders. And so, based with that, what have I used? Well, my simple Next.js 3.js starter. And it was very easy. Cloned it, installed everything, and I was just ready to go. Added a plane, added a GLSL function, and there you go. And when I was uh, playing around with it, I uh, I saw that I forgot a little uh, something that is very, very important in my ref class. The delta time we talked about a few minutes ago, uh, I was on my uh, Mac developing this, and I was arriving home and pulled everything to this screen, which is 30 FPS, and it was way slower because I didn't have that delta time calculations. Uh, based on my ref.ts right there, I just added it like a, a way to have access broadly to this delta time animation. So this just goes to show, even if you have your own tools that you've been using for a long time, you always can find a little bit of a thing to just upgrade what you already know and already have as tools. So yeah, Delta Time was a thing. Uh, I had my shader starters where I didn't have to know like, uh, oh yeah, I can't remember, like is it like GLSL projection to talk into the vertices, whatever. I just I just had everything laid out in front of me. Also an orbit control camera that I didn't have to plug into because like I know I would like to go around my object and see how things are reacting. And also Next.js uh, with TypeScript, this is just very, very easy and ready to deploy anywhere. Like me, I have a tendency to go towards uh, Netlify's free plan. For the moment, it's been plenty for me to goof around with my code. But yeah, in this project, apart from maybe one or two uh, problems with TypeScript and a couple of packages, I didn't have to do any setup. Downloaded it and directly went into the fun part of what I like to do. Um, I've been talking for a while now. So yeah, tools, pretty useful. Pretty nice, pretty great to work on, gonna make you better, gonna make you faster, gonna make you a better pay for sure. And they're going to make you say thank you to your past you later somewhere in your career. I think that is it for me. Do not hesitate to give me your feedback in the comments down below. By the way, on my last video, I did get quite a lot of feedbacks and uh, just some overall pretty good tips about GLSL and stuff like that. So please continue to do so because like, if it doesn't apply to me, it might be someone else in the comment section that might see your comment and be like, oh yeah, I could use this. So yeah, uh, thank you very much for hanging out. I think that's it for me. And I see you guys soon on the internet. Bye-bye everyone.